Today I want to introduce a real group ideal experiment. So both real and ideal, oh my. So let's start off with question. So once again, we are interested in going and seeing a doctor. So in this case, the doctor is our treatment. Uh, our population can once again be the entire unit, uh, United States population. This is our population of interest. Again, I'm representing it with a little person with a circle around it. The population size in this case will be capital N. So size equals capital N. Uh, we'll be interested in the outcome of number of days. So the number of days that they are sick. So number of days, and we'll call this Y. And the question that we're basically asking is, what is the average causal effect of going to see a doctor on the population of the United States as measured by the number of days Y? Okay, so what do we do this time? This time it's slightly different. Instead of sampling the entire population, we go ahead and we randomly sample. So this means take a couple of these individuals in so this is a small lowercase n, which is less than, let me use the original color here, capital N people. So we randomly sample lowercase n people. We go ahead and we subject half of these people to the treatment of a doctor, and we subject the other half to the treatment of no doctor. So what does this look like? So let's look at the first individual, y sub 1. So y sub 1 was treated by a doctor. So in this case, they got five days uh, and then they were well. Uh, but we don't necessarily see, because of the fundamental problem of causal inference, we don't necessarily see what would have happened if they didn't see a doctor. Uh, y sub 2, uh, this person didn't see a doctor. We said, hey, you cannot see a doctor. We forced them not to see a doctor, and they were sick for seven days. And we do this for every single person in our population, all the way up to y sub lowercase n. And so we can do y sub lowercase n, perhaps they were 10 days after seeing a doctor. Okay, so we get all of this data. So we've got two questions. So, so we've got all this data. What do we do with this data? How do we actually find the average causal effect? Well, it turns out to be simpler than one might imagine, but I will, I will hold off on that. And I will instead elaborate on the two problems that we have. Problem number one. How do we identify the causal effect now? We no longer see, again, because of the fundamental problem of causal inference, we no longer see what person number one would have happened if they actually didn't see the doctor. So how would we identify the causal effect? We certainly can't identify the unit level causal effect because we can't see it here. How can we identify the average causal effect? We call this problem, problem one, the problem of identification. So identification. Identification is specifically a causal inference question. So identification is specifically a causal inference question. This is what we will spend a lot of time uh, trying to figure out with causal inference. Uh, the second question, which we will brush through in this set of videos, but we will spend a lot of time on in another set of videos, uh, specifically the bootstrapping videos, which I'll link above. This second question is the question of estimation. The question here is, hey, we have a random sample from the population. Can we use this random sample? Let me just make that I there. Can we use this random sample to say things about the general population? So can we use a sample of 1,000 people in the United States to say anything about the general population of the United States? So we'll be studying both of these questions in the next coming videos. In fact, we'll be solving estimation in the next two videos, and then we'll be sort of spending the rest of our time on identification. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is why did I call this a real ideal experiment? Well, one, it is real in that we could do this experiment. It's not cost prohibitive and nor is it time machine prohibitive. The reason it's an ideal experiment is because there are a lot of assumptions here that I have not mentioned. Uh, the assumptions include SUTFA, which is stable unit, uh, unit treatment value assumption, exchangeability, positivity, double blind, as well as no measurement error. And we'll be going over all of these assumptions in a little bit and what we can do when these assumptions are violated even after that. So in that case, it is both real in that we can do it, but idealized, it's very hard to get it right. So stay tuned and we will solve the problem of estimation in the next couple of videos.